Hello everyone. Welcome to my first lecture on embedded systems. So today our topic is introduction to embedded systems, part one. So what is embedded system? Computing systems embedded within electronic devices are called embedded system. It can also be called as combination of computer hardware and software designed to perform a specific function. Any computing system that is not a desktop or computer or not a server can also be called as embedded system. So what are these application areas of this embedded systems? Automatic electronics, that is electronic devices that works automatically. Avionics, that means flight systems like missiles or planes. Trains, telecommunication, robotics, all these areas needs embedded system for it to function. Examples are car as an integrated control communication and information system consumer electronics for example mp3 audio digital camera home electronics etc production system information system for example wireless communication that is mobile phone wireless lan router etc wearable smart products like smart watch we see on shopping sites these days. So let's compare computer versus embedded system. So let's see at the components of the computer system a microprocessor, a primary memory, secondary memory, input output unit, networking unit, and operating systems. These are the parts of the computer components. The primary memory include RAM ROM cache memory, and secondary memory include hard disk, CD ROM, memory restricts, etc. And embedded system components, hardware similar to a computer, except secondary memory, main application software, real-time operating system. These are the components of embedded systems. So let's see a comparison side by side. So in embedded system, few applications that are known at design time and not programmable by end user end user mean the user that is using the system not the programmer it is the end user it is fixed runtime equipment its criteria is cost power consumption and predictability on the other hand general purpose computing broad class of applications programmable by end user that is computer program the user who is using the program can also program the computer and in this case faster is better but in the case of embedded system we have seen that first of all few applications but in case of general purpose computing it is broad class of application it was not embedded system is not programmable by the end user suppose ATM machine you cannot program an ATM machine, can you? Or automatic ticketing system, all this machine that dispose tickets when you enter money or you know smart card. Those are not programmable by end user. That is you. But you can program a computer. You can create a computer program. And faster is better in case of general purpose computing. That is why recent microprocessors are coming by Intel and other companies and people are buying more faster and faster computers. Okay, But in case of embedded system, because the power consumption needs to be low, faster is always not better. Faster is better but not always. And here criteria is cost in case of general purpose computing and speed is average okay so here are the character characteristics of embedded system first tip is dependable it needs to be dependable it needs to be reliable its maintainability needs to be high availability needs to be high safety and security reliability means 
RT if we take RT as a function of T probability of system working correctly provide that it was working at T equal to 0 then reliability is the number is the fraction that is ratio of number of times it has worked perfectly by number of times it have it has worked total in total maintainability it is the probability of system working correctly the time units after error occurred that is suppose at this time the error occurred how probable it is that it will work correctly next time okay just after the error availability means probability of system working at a time if the system is not working that is the embedded system not working then it is not available suppose the ATM machine is not working then it is not available to you 24 7 suppose the ATM machine is working 50 percent time then there will be 50 percent of chance of you getting the cash so that's the point safety so no harm to be caused that is we need these embedded system to be safe privacy is a part of safety okay so suppose you enter your ATM card in ATM machine and the information got leaked that is not a safe system and that is not a secure system okay so we need confidential and authenticate communication because if the communication that is the ATM machine and the bank server the communication is not confidential and authentic if the information is leaked then it is a breach of security and which is not good you won't want your data that is on your ATM card to be leaked right so that is safety and security another thing is efficient it needs to be energy efficient so suppose you are buying a robot to do some or some automated machine to do some work okay and it is costing a lot of energy it is not power efficient it is taking a lot of energy okay so it would not be considered as efficient machine the especially because the embedded systems are systems on a chip so so code size needs to be efficient a large code size means the complexity is more and the memory needed is more so that is not desirable runtime efficient okay so the time it takes to run the system run the program needs to be low otherwise it will take more time to complete the task at a hand weight efficient embedded systems some systems are portable some are not the portable ones needs to be weight efficient otherwise it will be a hassle it will be a hassle to carry around those embedded system cost efficient of course the system needs to be cost efficient very costly components must not be used to make the system yes it can be used if the price that we are paying is what we are getting like the profit is more then we can you know invest more but all around this should be cost efficient the machine should be cost efficient to make a pack of chips if it's take 10,000 rupees then it is not a cost efficient machine because people can make those by hand with lesser money okay so that's what cost efficient mean third characteristics is dedicate towards a certain application knowledge about behavior at design time can be used to minimize resources and to maximize robustness okay so a certain embedded system should do a certain task okay so that is what is mean by dedicated to a certain application knowledge dedicated user interface the user interface needs to be good okay if the user if the end user finds the embedded system a hassle you know because a embedded system is a com combination of software and hardware and the software the user interface of the software is not good then the user would find it difficult to browse 
like suppose the atm machine you want to take some cash from the machine withdraw some cash but you cannot find the cash withdrawal option and it is inside you know many 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 layers of options so it would be hassle because primary thing that the atm machine does is dispose cash when you give the card and the pin so the dedicated user interface should be good real time constants are another important part a real time system must react to stimuli from the control object or the operator within the time interval dictated by the environment like real time there are many machines that are you know real time systems a real time systems has a time constraint and it cannot take more or less time that it was given by the programmer okay so for real time system right answer arriving too late or too early are wrong okay so a real time constraint is called hard if not meeting that constraint could result in a catastrophe right so all other time constraint are called soft but the real time constraint is called hard a guaranteed system response has to be explained without statistical arguments frequently connected to physical environment through sensor and actuators so embedded system need to have connected to its environment through sensor and actuator so it knows what is happening around this around this system and it can respond depending upon the environment it generally has analog and digital parts typically embedded systems are reactive system so what is reactive system a reactive system is one which is in continual interaction with its environment and executes at a pace depend determined by the environment okay so behavior depends on input and current state constants of designing so the constants of designing in embedded system is available system memory available processor speed power cost and size so embedded system processor components the embedded system has this components program flow control unit which is called cu include fetch unit for fetching instruction from memory and execution unit eu includes alu that is arithmetic and logical unit and circuits that execute instruction for a program control task types of embedded system processor chip so there are many types of embedded system processor chip like general purpose processor which is called gpp in short application specific instruction set processor which is called asip or short asip single purpose processor which is called spp gpp or asip cores integrated into either asic or vlss circuit or field programmable gate array that is called fpga and sort application specific system processor okay so previously it was application specific instruction set processor that now it is system processor which is in sort called assp and multi core processor or multi processor so important consideration for system designer for selecting a processor first is instruction set you know often we use reduce instruction set that is risk processor these days okay so instruction set is a the important consideration for designer to design a embedded system maximum bits in an operand in a cycle how many bits are used in one operand in a cycle clock frequency okay clock frequency is the frequency like some mobile phones have mobile phones are also embedded system so some are 2 gigahertz some are 1 gigahertz and 2 gigahertz system work faster but could we could have used like 3 gigahertz 4 gigahertz processor but that would made make the cost of the phone more so clock frequency and processing speed is important but as well as the economic factor and ability to solve complex algorithms so some embedded system needs more complexity than others and those complex system needs to solve complex algorithms efficiently and in real time so thank you have a good day